ask anybody who hasn't spoken before and who's got something very concrete to say, to say it now. Just very, very briefly then. You know, the, the guy, the guy who spoke as a counsellor, you know, said, right, you're, you know, you know, okay, we've got to make these cuts, we're going to try and, you know, make as little damage as possible <coughs> to the opposition, but how can we, you know, is there a way that we can support you just as people on the street, people who aren't members of political parties, or, or whether we are or not, is there a way that we can support you to help you, you know, take a stance to say, actually, we are going to try <coughs> and uh, stop, you know, and, and um, resist the cuts? You know, is there anything that we can do to support you to say, to go to the council and say, actually, we don't want to do these cuts, you know, because maybe, you know, as the guy said, we have the power because we are the electorate, you know, or, or we are the people who, you know, maybe the leaders will follow. So, I mean, you know, can we do something to help you stand up and say, actually, people don't want these cuts, what can we do about it? That's my point. I haven't spoken. Oh, God, sorry. Yeah, yeah I, I want to pick up on, on things that have just been mentioned but not really developed, like Topshop, like the bastards are getting away with all this tax evasion. We need to be getting out there and telling people, look, if these guys paid up, we wouldn't need any cuts at all because it would pay for everything. I think we need <coughs> to talk about, instead of talk about what we're going to do next yeah. in the next yeah. 10 minutes. That's what I'd like to see happen next. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say that in the 80s when I was in Liverpool and I saw there sitting councillors who stood up, that's what I'd like to see. Councillors that stand up for working class people. When people are losing their jobs, and if you're working class, you don't get a job again. You know, I'm on the door. You can't work again. You've got the tax coming left, right, and centre. I'd like to see, like in Liverpool, councillors who stand up and say, right, I'm going to support, I'm going to not work with the Labour, I'm going to work with the Tories, I'm going to push the cuts through, I'm going to stand by working class people. And if they're not willing to do that, they should leave the stage and let someone else take the <laughs> And the income from that job is lost in the local economy. Now I remember Barry in the 80s when we, you know, we were actually arguing this with trade unionists and employers at the time when Thatcher's uh, case was going on. And we used to lose the case regularly on the basis that 30% of the workforce felt that they could get a job because they were young and they were all right, so technical redundancy money. 30% of them were over 55 and thought, take the money and I'll bugger off to Spain. And 30% of the buggers were, were left in, 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 without a job. And we lost vote after vote after vote, in factory after factory after factory. Because we didn't explain and we didn't articulate the intellectual case <coughs> for looking after jobs in our economy. Once you've lost a job, it's damned hard to get it back. And you've got to fight for that. So what I want the Labour councillor to do is not to go to jail. I don't even want the Liberal councillor to go to jail. <laughs> I prefer turning down the budget. I want them to use their leadership position to explain to the public what the consequences of this are. And not be seen. Because at the moment, if you read the Courier, you'd think the Labour Party was in controlling Cogdale. You know, you wouldn't think the Liberals had out to do with it. And certainly not the Tories. Now it's important they do realise what the impact of these jobs are on our local economy. On the, you know, the mothers and fathers and children that won't actually have a proper income from now on. And we all know that there were people in the 80s who were destroyed completely and never got a job again. And their kids coming up haven't tended not to get a job again. And that's got to be fought against. But it won't be fought by sending Labour councillors or Liberal councillors to jail for turning down the budget. It'll be fought because we get sufficient people to nobble enough councillors and enough MPs to change their mind. And that's what we should be doing. One of the tricks we did on the police campaign in Tobedon was to have a postcard, a, a, a pester postcard campaign. We gave everybody on the market a, a, a postcard and posted it off to the Home Secretary, the Chief Constable, the Chair of the uh, uh, Police Authority, and asked them for a response on why there wasn't proper policing. And they feel obliged to respond. Well, that's
that's all right if it's 10, but it was 1,500 that we sent. And they had to respond to every one. So you've got to get that sort of pressure. And I know it's mundane and it's not very uh, sexy, but it works. It upsets them. It unnerves them. If 50 or 60 people lobby a local councillor, they'll start to think about where they're voting back this. They really will. If a thousand people lobby an MP, you'll change their mind. Thank you very much for coming. Sorry. Back. When, when is work. Alice? When is Alice going to stop the traffic? Because I want to be there with her. Yeah. 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 Can, I, can I just say something? <laughs> very, you know, I, I think I said when I. Yes, actually, I don't need explaining about the uh, effect of a thousand public sector jobs, actually, in the ward I represent. I know it only too well. Um, you imply that the Labour councillors have been silent. Not today, or a week, or two weeks ago, months ago, I stood up in council, and it was on the front page of the Courier, saying that if these cuts were forced through, there would be an utter disaster in Cornwall. And I wrote that ordinary people, particularly low-paid people, shouldn't be bearing the burden of the banking crisis. It's not just people in this room, in the different parties who are prepared to speak up. Labour councillors have done as well. In reply to what you're saying, the best thing in my view that you could do to help Labour councillors is exactly what you're doing by being in here tonight. If every single person in this room no matter which party they're in, unite to put pressure on locally and nationally about these cuts. It helps Labour councillors defend their position inside the coalition and inside the council. So this is what you should be doing. It's a huge help to Labour councillors. So is the cross-union campaign that's going on as well. And the important thing for me is not just to go on and put pressure on local councillors. It's to remember this is about top shop. It is about voter fund and people who don't pay their bloody taxes. It is about education maintenance allowances and housing changes and cuts to disability benefits and councillors have nothing to do with them at all. Can I suggest, then, can I suggest that this Saturday, hopefully, as many of us in this room go into Halifax and we go down to Boots and we have the leaflets and we say that they are a set of tax dodgers and we do it in the name of this group that's been founded tonight, and we get in the courier, right? And Barry, you know, we can agree on this. We get in the courier, and we're saying, the cuts don't need to happen, the rich should pay for it, they're getting away with it, and we have actually worked that out, and we're telling the rest of Calderdale that we're not going to put up with it, right? And we advertise ourselves like that. I want to do that. I, I want to go to Boots this Saturday, there's only six of us. If we can get 30 of us down there this Saturday, let's do it and let's announce in that brilliant way, right, the creation of this group and all these other things that we've talked about tonight, we can argue and debate and muddle our way through and all the rest of it, but we're up and running and let's do it in a, in a bit of a splash what and let's go and get Boots day? this Saturday. What time? 11 o'clock outside Boots this Saturday, I'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. I, I'm aware of that, I'm aware of that, but I really do think that we need to get on the map in Halifax, on the streets, make a noise, right? I know there's the regional thing in Leeds, but I think we need to, before Christmas, we need to be on the, you know, doing something like that in Halifax this summer. Well, I can just say very, very, very No, 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 you can't. You can't. Thank you very much for coming. And Barry, one of the questions I've been like, you know, and I don't mean this to condemn you at all, is why didn't the Labour Party call a meeting then on the coast? Uh, yeah, you just closed the meeting. Yeah, exactly.